Hello, very good to see you all. As you know, uh, this is a very uh, busy uh, session of the Board of Governors with, uh, with many, uh, many important issues. So with that, let's go straight to your, to your questions. Questions? Yes. Hi, Rahi uh, Dabahnaw from Al Arabiya. Um, I have the first question regarding what you uh, just told the board about um, receiving plausible um, answer from Iran regarding one of the three secret locations. Uh, we heard a response from Israel, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the uh, Israeli prime minister, has said that you have bowed to political uh, pressure from Iran. He's also said that the IAEA might lose credibility over this. Um, how do you respond to that? And um, maybe I'll wait for your answer and ask the second question. Maybe you can. Okay. Uh, it's also regarding the 60% enriching of uranium by Iran. Uh, has this been now, is this now a de facto thing that the IAEA has accepted? Because we don't hear alarm bells um, on this. You said that there's 100 kilograms of uh, uranium enriched to 60%. Mm -hmm. Why is this not raising more concern? Well, thank you very much. Two, two very important uh, questions. Uh, regarding the issue of Mariban, let, let me say that uh, what we have informed is that we have received uh, a, a reply, a response uh, from Iran, which is plausible. And this is why uh, we uh, have said that we have no further questions on this particular uh, segment of an issue which is much wider. As you know, we, we continue to maintain an assessment uh, regarding uh, this uh, site where some very specific type of testing uh, uh, was uh, conducted and we have not changed that, uh, uh, that uh, assessment. What we have is received a, a reply that is plausible, so we cannot exclude that what they are telling us uh, may have happened, although we do not have any means to actually um, prove or disprove that that was the case, that that was the case, we cannot, uh, we cannot exclude it. Um, so then on the qualifications uh, that um, may be there, or opinions and comments on what we do, we are used to this, you know. Uh, one day is one side that says one thing and the other, the other day is another side. We accept this as part of our work. Our work is neutral, is impartial, is technical, and we will always say things as they are. The considerations of what this implies is not up to us, and I will never comment on, on government's opinions on what, on what we do. What I can tell you is that this is technical work, and what we are saying is, is, is technically, technically correct. Then on the 60%, well, on the reactions and why there are not uh, more uh, reactions about this, or uh, then again, it's uh, perhaps is a question that you should uh, put to others, not, not to me. What we are doing is telling the international community the exact amount of uh, enriched uranium at that level of enrichment that exists. And it is, uh, as you may have noted, above 100, 100 kilograms, maybe 116, 15, something like that, at that level. In, and, the, and the general inventory of enriched uranium has been uh, growing. It's uh, around 4,000. 500 uh, and, and, and different uh, amounts for the different uh, degrees of enrichment is growing as, as, as we are seeing uh, and on the 60% um, you say have you accepted well uh, enriching uranium is not forbidden as you know uh, what we do is uh, verify what is happening and we, and we inform so this would be Uh, hi, Gigi. Hi. Um, just thinking back to the core, I mean, we're used to hearing, you know, um, unhappiness from Israel about various aspects of, of, of this file, but there's, there's, there's an, a new accusation here, which is that you've essentially watered down safeguard standards in response to, or because of some political considerations, right? So can you say that categorically that is not true? Um, and then... Secondly, on your statement to the board, uh, where you said it, um, that um, essentially Iran should allow the installation of further monitoring equipment without further delay. 
suggesting there's been delay. Um, mm -hmm. What was that due to? What has happened? Why is this taking longer than we expected? And how much longer should we expect this to go? Yeah, yeah thank you, uh, On the standards, of course, uh, we, we, we never, ever, never, ever water down our standards. We, we stand by our standards. We, we apply our standards. And, uh, and if anything, in this, uh, um, uh, in this process, which is a complex process, which you have been following, uh, and we, have, uh, we have been uh, strict, um, technically impartial, uh, as I like to say, um, very firm, fair, but firm. So we, don't, we are not in the, in the business of watering down or politically adapting anything. These are opinions. We, we do not uh, take issue with them. We understand that there, there may be opinions. And without further delay, well, you know, um, this is, of course, uh, something on which uh, there, there can be opinions. Uh, we, uh, uh, we had a statement, joint statement agreed, as you remember, uh, in March, um, presupposing that we would be implementing a number of uh, voluntary, voluntary uh, additional monitoring and verification uh, measures. And this is, you know, going very slow. This is the reality. Uh, we have been doing things. This is why, and I think that this, this is also part of my obligation. I have to report fully what is what is going on. It wouldn't be fair to say that nothing is happening. No, that would not be true. Uh, the reality is that we have installed some cameras. We have installed some um, electronic monitoring uh, devices uh, at some places, but there is a lot more that uh, needs to be done. And this is why, since Obviously, I want to have as much capabilities, um, monitoring capabilities in place as soon as possible. Maybe uh, in due regard to uh, what your colleague was asking, it's an inventory that is growing, so I think, uh, I think we need to be present. I think we need to be uh, monitoring as much as we can. This is why I'm saying we need to go faster. We need to go faster. Uh, Albert Otti, DPA, Chairman Press Agency. Yes. I have a question about Ukraine. Um, on the sidelines of the Security Council uh, meeting last week, I think you indicated that you wanted more um, IEA monitors or experts in Saporizhia, and in the meantime, Moscow has also signaled that they're willing to, to have more people there. So exactly how, how many are there at any time now? How many more do you want? And um, additional question on that is, uh, as part of your five points, you all said that um, one of the five points is that uh, there should be no military personnel that can carry out attacks in the plant. Mm -hmm. So how are IEA experts equipped to, to, to monitor that? Thank you very much for the question, Albert. Uh, on the issue of, uh, of the number of experts, this may vary. Uh, typically, we have four people. We might have a little bit more. Uh, it will depend on the, on the, on the type of work that we need to, to carry out. We, uh, we welcome the comments that, uh, that uh, uh, the, the management of Russia, which is in control, in effective control of the, um, uh, of the station, uh, would be accommodating a, a bigger uh, presence. Uh, so we will, we will decide depending on the activities that we need, they need to carry out quite clearly with uh, five basic principles um, being established um, last week. Uh, we will also be assessing that against the background of the real situation. Um, the whole point of doing this is because we uh, consider that military activity, and in fact, there's already report about that, um, even today, uh, the, the military activity in the area is going to be increasing, so there might be a uh, need for, for, for more. It, it will depend. Um, uh, there has been comment, uh, commentary about uh, the ability of our inspectors to, to monitor this. We, I, I stand by what I said in, in New York, you may have heard. Uh, our experts are perfectly capable of observing and reporting on the uh, issues described in this uh, basic uh, uh, 
principles. And with regards to the, uh, to the military presence, uh, of course, uh, we were careful in, in, in drafting this and in, um, in consulting, because these points have been consulted um, with uh, the, the two sides uh, in, in, in characterizing them as uh, forces that could be used to project force um, as opposed to security presence on the site. So that can give you an idea of what we, uh, what we have in mind. Thank you very much. Johannes Blechberger for CGTN. Um, regarding Japan's plans to release wastewater uh, uh, at Fukushima into the ocean, are there any new concerns and how is uh, the IEA um, ensuring safety in the Pacific? Well, the concerns that exist, you know, there are countries in the region that have expressed concerns about uh, this, uh, this plan and we have been carrying out a very detailed and meticulous process of uh, preparing for um, uh, preparing a number of reports, um, and my final comprehensive report is going to be, uh, I hope, completed in a few in a few weeks. We just issued another one, so each one of our reports is public. So uh, you may have an idea of what uh, uh, we have been doing. Of course, uh, as um, the date uh, of a final decision and perhaps uh, start of a possible. Um, campaign of uh, controlled discharge of this water approaches, the level of uh, interest, concern, and, and, and perhaps even political discussion, as we are seeing at the Board of Governors, uh, increases. Uh, there is nothing new specifically on the technical uh, level. We are carrying out uh, as acti our activities as planned. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephanie Lichtenstein. I'm a freelancer today reporting for the Associated Press. Um, sorry to be asking two different questions, one on Ukraine. Um, in case I misunderstood you, you do not have a clear idea yet at what point the number of monitors at uh, ZNPP will be increased. Is that correct, my understanding? And my second question is about um, the reinstalled monitoring equipment. Um, the ones that you have actually managed to reinstall. Uh, do you have access as of now to that data or an agreement at what point you will have access to that data? Yep. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much, Stephanie, for the, for the two questions. On the, at, at what point? Uh, well, in general, there is, uh, m my idea is to reinforce ISAMS because ISAMS will have now a, a wider um, mission, if you want. Uh, so the, the, there may be a, a need to, to reinforce the teams. The, the, the moment is not so, so relevant. It may be with the next rotation or with the following one. I, I, I don't consider this as a, as a point of uh, substantive relevance. Um, the second, uh, on the re, uh, reinstallment of equipment and the access uh, to the information, um, it's a very good point, uh, and this is something I have raised with my Iranian counterparts. Of course, the reinstallment of the equipment is very important, having the cameras that were removed or disconnected, or the electronic uh, monitoring devices that we may have to control uh, and to check the, the enrichment uh, levels and activity is very, very important. But uh, it is obvious that there has been an important gap in the, in the information. And I would characterize this as, as two types of gaps. On the first, in the first place, um, you may remember the issue is a, is a bit um, complex and intricate, but it's like that. Um, we had an arrangement uh, as a result of one of my trips to Tehran in February 2021, when we decided that we would have all these systems, but the information itself would be kept uh, in a very complex, convoluted way under our seals, but without us having access to that information. That is one thing, because we never had uh, access to that information. That information, uh, when, when Iran decided last uh, summer um, to disconnect these systems, etc. well, it remained there. And then there is the gap gap, I would say. There's a gap from that point to now where we don't have cameras, we, don't, we haven't had anything. So no information, no cameras, nothing. So uh, well, all, all we are saying, and I think this is 
common sense, basically. All right, we reconnect uh, the, uh, the, the cameras and we have the systems again, but in order for us to be able to reconstruct the whole picture, we need to sit down with Iran and have a, some way to uh, reconstruct the, the jigsaw puzzle. And, and there may be parts that are going to be a bit more difficult because in some, for, for, for the, this first gap, as I described it, we have, we have the footage, hmm? so it's easier for our people to do that. But for the second part, from June 2022, to June 2023, then it's a matter that will require some other type of consultation, access to records, talking to people, making some projections, etc., etc. So in the end, we can reconstruct the, 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 the picture and say, well, in this period, we our, our gross estimate is that such and such amount of uh, rotors and bellows, etc., has have been have been manufactured. I I, I hope. It's un understandable. If it's not, I'm sorry. I can try again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilman Reggie from the BBC. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I have three questions, yeah. if I may. Yes. First, on uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's mm -hmm. statement uh, that uh, he says that Iran is continuing to lie to the IAEA, the IAEA is, has capitulated to Iran's pressure, and this capitulation is a black stain on the records of the IAEA. Mm -hmm. I just wondered whether you can specifically address these three allegations. One. Uh, secondly, uh, the issue of marijuana, of Ade. Uh, you say um, there is some explanation on some aspects mm -hmm. of what happened. Correct. There. And you're uh, and you stay standing by what you said, and your assessment stands on other issues vis-a-vis -vis this this particular subject. Mm -hmm. I just wondered whether you can actually tell us exactly what, according to you, happened in 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 Abadi uh, that is problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, and thirdly, uh, the issue of the eighty-three percent. Um, enrichment that we mm -hmm. found last time, a few months back. Uh, are you satisfied that this is, was an accidental thing or a normal sort of a thing in the process, or was it more than that? Can you specify that? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, as I said, uh, I would never <coughs> enter into a polemic or an argument with the head of uh, government of any member of the IEA. They have their opinions, and what I said in my answer to, to uh, Francois uh, stands. I mean, we never, uh, we never uh, politicize exercises. We have our standards. We apply them always. So the, the, in, any, in, in any event, I would say the politicization is on the eye of the beholder. They, they may be seeing things in one way or the other, and I won't criticize that. We simply do our job in the same way, and we'll continue doing our job uh, in, in the same uh, way. And we respect uh, comments uh, from everyone. Uh, on on Marivan Abade, it's a long story, as you know, and what, what I was trying to explain is that uh, we have a previous assessment, which is well known that in, in, in Marivana Bade there have been a number of uh, explosive experiments uh, in the past um, for which there hasn't been any uh, well, in preparation for uh, uh, neutron detectors uh, to be used with nuclear material at an ulterior uh, stage, which are part of, the, uh, of um, the assessment, the historic assessment that the IEA has been uh, um, having on this, uh, on this site. Then, as, as you may remember, uh, the IEA conducted some access, some complementary uh, access um, uh, in 2020 uh, or 2021, um, and then uh, new traces of uh, anthropogenic uranium were discovered, and on this particular aspect, uh, Iran has provided us with uh, an explanation which we characterize as plausible, not impossible. 
So in good faith, we cannot say that it's, it is impossible that this happened. We don't have any additional proof. We have approached other uh, member states which were possibly involved um, in, 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 the, in the explanation that was given by Iran, that this was part of a, a mining activities conducting at the time, at the time, at the time, sorry, of the Soviet Union, and that perhaps, uh, as part of this, uh, some of these uh, traces could have been originated because of, of a lab that was located there. That is not impossible. We don't have a way to prove this, uh, but uh, we cannot disprove it either. So as we conduct our work in good faith, uh, we cannot simply for the sake of keeping something uh, open, continue to seek what is impossible to pursue. But as I said, this is a part, a segment of a very wide um, uh, issue. So these ideas that we are closing, canceling things is not accurate, it's incorrect, all right? So I hope this is clear. And on the enrichment, yes, I think the explanation was technically correct. Um, uh, what we, of course, and I think is very credit to our excellent um, inspectors and experts that were on the spot immediately able to identify this very high degree of enrichment. Um, uh, we had a, an analysis with the uh, technical operators of this um, facility, and again, uh, this oscillation, there's an oscillation that could be at the source of this uh, very high uh, level. What we have said is that there hasn't been any accumulation, no, no uh, st storage, uh, no production uh, at that uh, particular level. Um, incidentally, this um, uh, electronic uh, devices that we are trying to set up are very important in giving us an immediate impression of what happens in case there is another oscillation or otherwise. This is, we are, uh, something that we are monitoring so permanently. Th this we have to move on to question back. Yes. Hello, DG. Hello. Uh, uh, my question goes to your last response to my colleague. Yeah. Uh, also, in your in, uh, in your statement to the Board of Governors, mm -hmm. you informed about the installation of the new devices in Natanz and Fordo facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is: uh, uh, Could you tell us more about the function of the devices, and will the agency, will the IAEA, have access to the data of the devices? Yeah. Yes. Th this yes, because these are. Uh, online, like an online system that allows you to read automatically or uh, in real time uh, the activity in a cascade or the, the enrichment activity. So you have direct access uh, to it. And I think it is, is something that works well because it's also in the interest of, of Iran that we have a clear view so there is no um, uh, doubt of what is happening. In any case, we would be able even in the absence of, of this, I want to say, in the absence of these systems, devices, we would be able, as we did uh, when, we, uh, when we found this 83.4, um, we would be able to do it, but this provides us with a more reliable, uh, immediate source of information. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Have a good day. Thank you very much.